Hey everybody, it's Gina here from Gina Makes It. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am making a gate or a garden door for an existing journal page. I spent a few nights going through my journal and kind of updating the pages. And as I was flipping through them the other day, I thought, well, some of these pages are kind of boring because I was looking at it from a utilitarian perspective where I wanted it to get done and I wasn't exactly looking at it from a creative perspective and so I thought well I'm going to go back onto these pages and see if I can add something to them to make them a little bit more interesting. So I decided to start with this spread which was a spread about a new garden that my husband and I are putting in our backyard and it's a very large garden space and it's a little bit involved. We've spent the last couple weekends working on it and I kind of want it to be its own special space for me and so I, my idea with the garden is to have like a little gate door. Uh, to enter it and so I thought now wouldn't that be neat to have a little gate or door on this journal spread because the pictures underneath and the journaling underneath is basically just a bunch of pictures separated with some washi tape and so I thought hmm I wonder if there's a way that I could make a door out of some watercolor paper so I pulled out this little pad of watercolor paper that I bought from Hobby Lobby and it's just four by six pieces of watercolor paper that I thought would probably work well if I drew like a little door on top of them so I drew kind of a half arc and I cut it out and I tried it on the page and I thought okay well that's gonna look right and so then I just copied it onto the other piece of paper and now I am going to just kind of paint it and so when I got these watercolors I did swatch out the colors just so I could see what the colors look like when they're actually in use and so I decided not to use the super dark brown because I knew that I wanted to use that dark brown as sort of like the accent color to kind of create depth on the door itself so I just started with this lighter brown which is almost kind of like a burnt amber there's like a little bit of orange in it and I'm just covering the whole entire piece of watercolor paper and I'm going to do this a few times until I get the desired effect and then I just dry it with my heat tool Once I finish doing that, I take my smaller brush and I decide to use that darker brown to start drawing some lines. And so the idea that I had in my head was that this was a wooden gate with planks. And so I thought that if I kind of separated each area with the darker brown that I would start to create an effective depth perception of the wood panels themselves and then I started thinking about how gates are actually constructed and how they're not really even on top and each board is sort of sloped but yet kind of crooked and so I started cutting around the top I wanted to add a lot of depth around the edges and so I'm taking that dark brown and I'm going over the edges very similar to what we do with our stamp pads when we are kind of distressing up pictures I did sort of the same thing and then I thought hmm you know the top of gates have a separation in them and so I took my scissors and I started creating gaps with them and you can see that it's starting to really kind of look like a gate which kind of shocked me because I have to be honest with you when I started I wasn't so sure but as I was going on and I kept adding more and more detail it really started resembling a gate and I was really happy about that so I just kind of continued this process until I get it looking exactly how I want it to look and it's just a process of adding more dark to it, adding a little bit of that base watercolor to it, kind of getting in between each of those areas to make sure that there's no white showing and that that's where I'm going to put my dark because that's where I want to show depth. Thank you. 
After I finished drying it, I knew that I wanted to cover the back with some fabric. And I had this specific fabric in mind because of the geometric nature of it with the flowers. It really reminded me of this garden area that we were creating with these raised beds and this kind of long rectangle shape. So I was just trying to figure out how I wanted the fabric to go on the back. And at first I thought it would be nice to have those flowers kind of peeping out underneath from the front as if the flowers were sort of framing the base of the gate but in execution it didn't really work out that well but you could see I'm just kind of gluing the fabric down with my fabric tech glue and I just end up cutting a large perimeter around the edge which I'm actually very glad that I did because even though I didn't use that bottom part the way that I thought I was going to and that's kind of why I'm re positioning it here because it wasn't straight so I'm just trying to get it straight I do end up using the portion on both the left and the right side of each gate to hinge the gate down onto the page I knew that I wanted to hinge it that was always going to be my method of adhering it to the page but I originally thought that I was going to do it with some extra watercolor paper by gluing it on but it became clear to me that the best way to do it was just to use this excess fabric that was hanging off so you can see that I'm just going around the edges and I'm gluing it to make sure that all the little bits are glued down and this is when I trim it first I started ripping it it, and then I started trimming it to see which one I liked better and I did like the clean trim instead of the rip so I go ahead and take my scissors and continue on around the top portion leaving the left side and leaving the bottom but then I eventually do cut off the bottom as I mentioned because that effect wasn't working for me and I do kind of curve and straighten out the left side because I know that that is going to be my hinge and then I just repeat this exact same process with the right side of the gate
I decided to create a nice crease in my hinged fabric by ironing it down just like you would if you were ironing a seam or something if you were sewing. So off camera my iron was heating up and I was getting ready to do that and I decided to make two little door knobs using some of the brown watercolor paint and a heart punch that I have in my stash and so I just painted the little swatch in the corner I dried it with my heat gun and then I punched out the little heart with my heart punch and those I decided were going to be my doorknobs After I created the crease in my fabric hinge with my iron, I came back to my work table and I decided that my heart doorknobs needed a little bit more paint, specifically around the edges. I didn't want any of those white edges showing and so I'm just kind of going over the whole thing with my dark watercolor brown pigment. And once I finished doing that, I decided to add a little bit more of a gap between the boards on the bottom and the top of each of the gates because I didn't I felt like it was a little too uniform and I wanted it to be a little bit more whimsical and a little bit more realistic. Well, as I was painting the last touches on it, I was debating in my head, should I sew it? Should I not sew it? Should I sew it? Should I not sew it? And I decided to just sew down the edges of each plank with some brown thread. And I also did a little bit of sewing onto the heart doorknobs. And I'm glad that I did because I do feel like it added the right amount of texture. I was afraid to go around the perimeter because I just didn't think that it really needed it. I thought that it might kind of provide too much of a barrier around the edge and then it wouldn't look so gate-like and so I was just afraid of defining those edges. I wanted to leave them a little bit undefined. So luckily I had already placed washi tape around my pictures and so I had like a natural gap where I could slide my hinge under and at first I was just going to tape the hinge down with the washi tape but it wasn't sticking too well so I decided to add a little bit of glue on the bottom of the hinge and of course I keep testing the gate to make sure that my journal is actually going to close and I wanted it positioned in the right spot. The first side went in pretty easy, but this side was a little trickier just because the fabric was kind of bunching up on me a little bit. Plus, I didn't want that left gate to be higher than the right gate. I really wanted them to be even as a gate would be. And so I just spent a lot of time kind of readjusting and getting it to where I needed it to be. I glued down my heart doorknobs in the middle of each gate and at this point I decide it needs one finishing touch so I decide to pull out my letter stamps and a piece of coffee dyed paper and I stamp the words my garden with some distress ink in vintage photo and then I kind of rip each edge and I glue a little scrap piece of fabric to the back of it and then I glue it on the lower right hand corner. 
that is going to wrap up today's video. I have always wanted to try a pop-out door in a journal and I just never had the inclination. I never had the right page to do it and this was just the absolute perfect page to do it. And sometimes it amazes me when something is created from nothing. Like these little gates were literally created from two pieces of white watercolor paper and that that just that's crazy so if I can do this you can do this too and I think it could be applied to any sort of a gate it doesn't even have to be a fence it could be a door of some sort or really anything that your heart can imagine as always thanks so much for watching my YouTube videos and supporting my channel I really do appreciate it I'll see you next time